Good evening. I'm Ed Morrow. The name of the program is Person to Person. It's all live. There's no film. Tonight, we'll be visiting first with that talented puppeteer, Bert Tilstrom, in Chicago, and then on to California and the home of comedian Danny Thomas and his family. We'll be ready in exactly 30 seconds. Person to person. No gift says Merry Christmas as personally as a Lord Elgin watch. Give him the 21 jewel shock resistant Randall. A man's watch through and through with Elgin's guaranteed unbreakable DuraPower mainspring. One of many designs in your jeweler's Lord Elgin selection from 7150. All of them timely Christmas gifts, exclusively yours from Elgin. The beautiful way to say Merry Christmas. And now back to Edward R. Murrow. If you believe in Santa Claus, then you also know of the magical world of Bert Tilstrom, and you probably belong to it. Bert Tilstrom's world is the program Kukla, Fran, and Ollie, which was on television before there was a network, more than eight years ago, and it's still going strong. Tilstrom himself is somewhat older, he's 38, and he's been a puppeteer since childhood. Burr created the Kukla Show. He's also the voices, minds, and bodies of all the Kuklapolitan players, excepting, of course, Fran Allison. Burr Tilstrom lives in this converted coach house in Chicago, uh, the one behind the big tree. It has two rooms on two floors, enough space to house all of Burr's wonderful friends. What do you good think? E good evening. Oh, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Morrow. Good evening, Ed. Mr. Merle. No, I'm going to call him by his first. Hi, Ed. <laughs> I, 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 I was looking for Bird Tilstrom. Oh, well, uh, he's somewhere around here. Uh, I'll, uh, we better go look for him, Cooper. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Merle, I'm sorry that he's not right here. You come with me. <laughs> I, I thought for a minute we'd uh, have to go away and come back when Burr is around. Evening, Burr. Good evening, Ed. You can never get very far from Kukla and Ollie, can you? Not too far, about, uh, shall we say, uh, an arm's length. <laughs> uh, Burr, what would life be like for you without television? Well, Ed, uh, I really can't imagine it. These last eight and a half years have been so wonderful for me. I've had such a wonderful, exciting experience with Kukla and Ollie, and I think that, uh, I think I would probably uh, have finished with them a long time ago if it weren't for uh, for television because you see i hate to do the same show twice uh -huh. and being on every night the way we are uh, i can do uh, a different show every night and never really get bored with myself i see uh you're going to work on christmas or do you have other plans well uh, <clears throat> i'm going to work but i'm not going to do a show you might call it a kind of a labor of love you see uh, all the folks who are in back of the kukla politics all the production staff and also fran come over to my house, this house, the coach house, uh, for Christmas dinner. Yes. And I'm going to uh, cook it. Good. So, <laughs> it's a labor of love. I really enjoy it very much. Uh -huh. uh, we meet here and exchange presents. Uh, some of them are here already, Ed. Maybe you'd like to see a few of them. <coughs> uh, these are the, uh, the ones here that have arrived. I imagine by the time uh, Sunday arrives, well, maybe the stack will be that high. At least I hope so. I'd like to uh, sneak a look, but I don't dare. <laughs> I, d I actually did add some of these, uh, a little, uh, as Ollie calls them, ornaments. He always <laughs> gets the, the, the syllables mixed up. These little uh, ornaments arrived, uh, and they said open before Christmas. Uh, this is one of Fran and one of Ollie, and here's a little one of Kukla. These were made by a former Kuklapolitan who is not now working uh, with us. They're very nice ornaments, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Burr, that projector there, uh, mm -hmm. is that a Christmas present? No, uh, uh, Ed, that's... Um, that's from a friend of ours, a friend of yours, as well as a friend of mine, uh, Tallulah, a bank head, oh, yes. of course. And uh, about so five years ago, I made my first trip to Europe. Uh, and the night before I sailed, I was visiting out at her house in the country, and she said, oh, Baby, oh, baby, when you, uh, when you get back, baby, I want to see your photographs. I want to see all your pictures. And I said, Well, Tallulah, uh, darling, I don't have a camera, and I'm not, I'm not going to take any pictures. She said, Baby, you, you're not going to take any pictures. You. You've got to have pictures, you know, man. <laughs> so uh, the next morning when we sailed, uh, the projector was not there, but a camera and 24 rolls of colored film uh, were aboard the ship. Uh, I took pictures like crazy, if you can imagine. I got home, the projector was here, 
And believe it or not, Ed, uh, uh, even for the rank amateur I was, every single inch of the film uh, turned out okay. Oh, good. Well, Burr, we've seen one of your two rooms. Uh, do you think we could have a look at the other one? It's kind of messy. Well, let's go anyway. <laughs> It's all full of Christmas wrappings and odds and ends from props and so forth. Uh -huh. It's the workshop, you know, Ed. Yeah. Uh, Burr, have you ever thought about leaving Chicago? Yes, Ed, I have thought about it. Uh, uh, I've never done anything about it, though. Well, what is it that you like so much about Chicago? Well, Ed, I think, first of all, uh, Chicago is home. Uh, it's the home of Kukla and Ali. I'm not really at all sure that, that Kukla and Ali would... Uh, I don't know how they would take New York or California, which are, of course, the other two great uh, production centers of television. I'm afraid maybe Kukla and Ali kind of belong uh, out here in the Midwest. It's, uh, it's their home. They're, they're happy here. Mm -hmm. I am. This workshop, uh, that's where your show is born, isn't it, Burr? Well, uh, physically speaking, uh, Ed, uh, many of the props, most of the props for the show are made here. Uh, we do some rehearsing here for special shows. Uh, upstairs we have program meetings and we also uh, do some music rehearsals. Uh, but uh, I should say the actual ideas are uh, come when we're down in the television studio itself. And uh, where do the ideas actually come from? <laughs> well, uh, that's hard to say. They come from people, I would say. Uh, I always feel that, uh, especially in a world of imagination, of fantasy, uh, in any world that is as creative as, as that is, uh, you must, an artist must reflect uh, the things that are around him. And uh, sometimes an idea will come from Fran. Uh, many times Fran will come in with a funny story about a taxi ride or something, and that will spur us onto a show. Maybe it'll come from uh, the policeman around the corner, or maybe from my mother or my father, or, or maybe from my little dog. Uh, you, I, I feel that they come from life. And I must reflect in, in my way uh, the things I see about him. Mm -hmm. I, I remember once that Kukla and Ali uh, had a rather unexpected discussion on the United Nations. <laughs> Do you think we could try them out on that subject again? Well, I'll look for them. All right. <clears throat> this is a little practice stage, Ed, that we use down here sometimes, and I imagine since they're theatrical people, they'll be backstage. Hold on a minute. Yes? Me? Sure. Kukla? No, you want me, Mr. Murray? Yeah. Uh, do you remember that discussion that you and Ollie had about uh, uh, the United Nations? I remember it, Ed. <laughs> uh, Just like it was yesterday. Are you ready? Sure. Uh, see, it all started about it was on UN Day, and we were uh, just discussing it. And I said to Kukul, I said, uh, Kuk, old boy, uh, what is this thing about United Nations? How is it going to work? How, how can people of all creeds and nationalities and races and colors and religions and, and all that, how can they ever possibly get together, especially with different languages and all. And what did you say, Kukla? Well, as I remember it, Ed, I, I told Ollie that after all in the Kuklapolitan troop, there were, well, Princess, there's a rabbit. He's our mailman. And uh, then uh, there's a stagehand who, who doesn't even speak any kind of language. It's sort of, we call it Tui talk. <laughs> and then there's a, uh, a retired opera singer. And uh, there is a, now a hen. And uh, a witch, uh, Miss Witch, who flies around on a broomstick, and a very beautiful lady uh, named Fran. And uh, who else, Ollie? And the dragon. That's me. A and I said, I said to him, well, Ollie, if all these people can get together and have fun, and we do have fun, uh, why shouldn't there be an equal chance for everybody in, in the world to kind of get together and understand each other? And uh, that's kind of the way we explain it. I, does that make sense to you? You know, I think it makes more sense than you hear around the United Nations sometimes these Bless days. Your heart. <laughs> Kukla, Ali, that was great. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Ed. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you. Uh, Burr. Yes, Ed. Uh, for whom do you do your show? By that I mean, uh, who's your audience? Well, I guess almost anybody who wants to watch, Ed. Uh, there's no, I've never felt that there's an age barrier of any sort. We have letters from, uh, from people who are, are all ages, from the very tiniest infants, really, uh, to people who are, who are way up in their 90s. And uh, I think we do it just for the people who, who, who love our kind of uh, whimsy or whatever you want to call it, our kind of fun. We, I play it very much for Fran. Fran is one of my greatest audiences. And 
I also, I must confess, I entertain myself. I enjoy <laughs> it. I love it. Uh, Burr, Kukla and Ollie have been around a long time. Uh, do you sense any change in them, or are they aging gracefully? Well, physically, uh, Ed, I think maybe they uh, show their age. Uh, spiritually, uh, if I may use that word, I, I believe that, I hope that Kukla and Ali are mellowing a little. Uh, I've mellowed a little uh, in, in these last few years and uh, uh, grown a little, I hope. And I think they perhaps reflect that same spirit. Uh, I have here in the studio, in our workshop here, uh, a drawer that's kind of a secret drawer in a way. And I hesitate to show it very often, but I, I thought maybe you might be uh, interested tonight it has all the, uh, all the kuklas that are retired because, unfortunately, uh, the little cotton bodies that, that make up kukla, the physical kukla, uh, wear out. Uh, uh -huh. Actually, uh, Ed, I've learned uh, maybe a little lesson of immortality. Uh, sounds a little deep, but I believe I have from uh, this little drawer because at first I hated to retire them to the drawer, but now I realize that the kukla does not exist in a drawer or in a cotton puppet, but really in, in my mind, uh, I should say part in my mind, and part in the minds of all the friends who have been so wonderful to us and watched us for so long. This is, uh, this is the first kukla, and uh, he's kind of old, I'm afraid. But he doesn't, he doesn't exist in, in this little image. I, I believe the kukla is in the hearts and the minds of his friends. I hope he's there. Well, I'm sure your hope has been realized, too, Bert Tilstrom. Thanks very much indeed for letting us come and visit you tonight, and Merry Christmas to you okay. and all the Kuklapolitans. Thank you, Ed. Merry Thanks. Christmas to you. Thanks, Bert Tilstrom. Good night. In just a moment, we'll take you on a visit to the home of Danny Thomas in Los Angeles. Good evening. With apologies to Mr. Murrow, how would you like to join me in a visit to the world's busiest man? Hello up there. Hello, Bob. Merry Christmas. I imagine you're pretty busy. Right up to my beard, Bob. <laughs> what seems to be leading the gift list this year, Santa? Well, Bob, I've never seen anything like it. Just about every woman got the same idea this year. Look at this. Elgin Petite Watches. Every one. Seems that women have always wanted a tiny watch like this, but many couldn't afford it. Well, this year, Elgin created the Petite, the smallest watches in the whole world from 33.75. Look, small enough to pass through a lady's ring. A tiny watch at a tiny price. Say, that looks like a wonderful idea for my wife. Yes, indeed, and there are other styles, too. And every Elgin Petite has the heart that never breaks. Elgin's guaranteed, unbreakable Durapower mainspring. I'm convinced, Santa. My wife is going to get a petite watch this Christmas. Elgin petite, Bob. Only Elgin makes a watch so small for $33.75. <laughs> well, goodbye, Bob. Thanks a million, Santa. See you soon. And you'll want to see your jeweler soon about an Elgin petite. Exclusively yours from Elgin. The beautiful way to say Merry Christmas. And now back to Edward R. Murrow. Amos Jacobs is considered by old timers in show business as the greatest storyteller of them all. Amos Jacobs is better known as Danny Thomas to the millions who see him in nightclubs, the movies, and on his Make Room for Daddy television show. Danny was born 41 years ago in Deerfield, Michigan, the fifth of 10 children born to immigrant parents from Syria. Danny started singing at banquets when he was still in knee pants. In his late teens, he became MC of a radio show in Detroit, and he married a young singer by the name of Rosemary. They spent their first 10 years living out of suitcases on the nightclub circuit before Danny made enough fame and fortune for a permanent home. For 11 years now, Rosemary and Danny Thomas have lived in this Beverly Hills, California home with their three children. Danny returned from a job at Las Vegas two days ago. And I know his family is busy getting ready for Christmas. Good evening, Rosemary. Good evening, Mr. Merrill. Good evening, Danny. Hi, good evening, good evening. Danny, uh, how are the Christmas preparations coming along? Well, pretty good. I've got five of my disc jockey friends hanging here. <laughs> <laughs> pretty well. Well, the five members of the Thomas family should make it a nice, warm group. Well, uh, 
I don't believe we'd, uh, we can take a chance on setting table only for the five members of our family. Yet. We've got, uh, we always have six or seven places prepared for just drop-ins. Uh-huh. Uh, Mrs. Thomas, do you have any idea in how many different places you two have celebrated Christmas? Well, sir, this is the third Christmas at home, thank God. But we've been around the country about 15 times the way it's Christmas time. All parts of the country? All mm. over. Uh, tell me this, uh, does Danny share the Christmas chores? I mean, uh, shopping and decorating and that sort of thing? Yes, he does. He's a great decorator. Would you like to see some of our decorations? I would indeed. Well, I can't take all the credit for this decoration, but come into the dining room. I think it's quite unusual. Uh, first of all, we have here a U-shaped table uh, for a purpose. This table is shaped like this so that no one will sit with his back to this very beautiful wood carving of the Last Supper. This is uh, carved of Honduras mahogany, uh, and it's an inch and a quarter deep, and actually has uh, the uh, effect of much, much more depth than that. It certainly has. It was uh, done in my backyard, as a matter of fact. Was it? Fourteen months it took to do it, and it was done by a young Scotch-Mexican boy. His name is William Brent, and I think he's a truly great, great artist. And uh, it is 13 feet by 6 feet. And it's uh, naturally going to wind up in some museum someday. What a lovely thing to have in your dining room. Yes, we are very proud of it. We started out uh, looking for something maybe 4 feet by 2 feet, but Mrs. T got with this young man, and before you know it, this is what happened. It's beautiful. Sight to behold. We're crazy about it. Mm. Danny, uh, uh, where is your Christmas tree? Well, it's in, it's in the living room. If you want to come with me through here, I'll pick up Mrs. T and we'll uh, take Good. her in there. Darling, Mr. Merrill would like to see your Christmas tree. Do you want to? All right. Uh, <clears throat> can we stop under the mistletoe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is our living room. And there's the tree over there. And uh, uh, beside the ornaments, we have uh, some other people here. This is our daughter, Margaret. Good evening, Margaret. Good evening, Mr. Murrow. Margaret attends University of Southern California. Ah, yes. And this is our daughter, Teresa. Good evening, Teresa. Good evening, Mr. Murrow. She's in eighth grade at Beverly Hills Catholic School. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, this fullback is our son, Tony. <laughs> How are you, Tony? Fine. Good. Um, Tony, yes. uh, do you think I could have another look at that Christmas tree? Yes. Oh, it's a lovely and thing, isn't it? Here's the tree and here's the packages. Now, tell me, how many of those packages are for you? Most of them, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell what's in some of them? Yeah. I'll, I'll bet you could make a good guess, couldn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some I don't and some I do. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. Teresa, um, do you have your Christmas shopping all finished? Well, yes, I have. I did most of it early this year. But really, I did a lot of it in, um, the, uh, in the August clearance sale. Did you? <laughs> well, that was very forehanded, wasn't it? Uh, Margaret, you live on the campus at uh, Southern Cal, don't you? Is that right? No, not yet, Mr. Murrow. Oh, don't you? Already, I belong to the Thetas, are building a new house. We hope to be in it about spring. Uh-huh. You know, back here in New York, I've heard a rumor that on occasion you have some allowance problems. Could this possibly be true? I'm afraid it is. When I started at the university, I had many more expenses to meet. And I thought that maybe I better have a checking account. I suggested for Daddy and I to have a joint account. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like that either. No, I said no. <laughs> so we opened a small checking account for myself. A very small checking account. Do you have yep. trouble keeping it straight? Well, you know, I used to think I was pretty good at math. But after having a few checks bounced, I think I'd better take a refresher course. <laughs> uh, Margaret, uh, do you think your dad is as funny in the living room as he is on stage? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, in our house, Daddy's the greatest straight man in the world. <laughs> uh, Rosemary, does Danny ever get confused between his television family and your family? He certainly does. You see, on television, he has a wife and two children. And here at home, he has a wife and three children. 
and he spends four days of the week with them on television and three with us. So when he comes home naturally, he's all confused and gets the names all wrong. But I really don't mind him forgetting our anniversaries or my birthdays, but how could he forget my name? <laughs> uh, Danny, I've heard some speculation about this. How much of your make room for daddy material comes from your real family life? Quite a bit of it. Quite a bit of it, really. Uh, we have many, many premises, have had many premises on make room for daddy that were born right here in this house. Uh, I, you haven't enough time for me <laughs> to give you uh, all the illustrations, but one in particular was, was when Tony uh, uh, scratched up the walls with crayon, and I chased him about two years ago, and I chased him all over the house. I was really sore at him, and I took off my belt. I finally got him cornered, and just before I got my first whack in, he looked up at me and he said, you wouldn't hit your own son, would you? <laughs> so that uh, kind of left me for dead. I was screaming and laughing. And Rosemary came in and said, you call this discipline? So I handed her the belt and I said, here, you hit him. <laughs> of course, he didn't get spanked. I was just going to say. No. Uh, Rosemary, comedians have reputations for being warriors when they're off stage. Is, is Danny much of a warrior? Yes, he is, to an extent. I believe that... Most hardworking people do get a little worrisome at times, but I think that's sort of good for them because it keeps them on their toes. And Danny has never been one to relax on his past laurels, and the rewards have been great. Mm. They certainly have. Uh, Danny, uh, I know you were recently knighted by Pope Pius XII for your efforts in the building of the St. Jude Hospital down in Memphis. Is, is that work pretty well finished now? Well, no. No, it's not finished, but I'm certainly glad you asked me about it because uh, I'd like to show you the, a plan if you come into the den with me. Excuse me, family. You come into the den, and uh, I'll show you this plan that I have here. Uh, this sketch was drawn by the famous architect, uh, Paul Williams, and... Uh, he, uh, he did a magnificent job at no cost to us at all. He's drawing the blueprints absolutely free. Mm. We're getting a lot of help. Uh, I have, to date, $460,000 raised, and I've got to raise $1,250,000 in order to build this hospital. And I'm going to do something now that I'm not ashamed to do, and I hope you won't mind too much if I take advantage of your wonderful friends. But I want to beg, I want to beg all of the people at this great time of the year for some help in building St. Jude Hospital for underprivileged children in the South. It's going to be built in Memphis, Tennessee, and God willing, will break ground in June. But I am one person. I am not a big institution. I am certainly not a great star, but whoever at all has liked my entertainment in the past, I'm begging now to send whatever contribution they possibly can to St. Jude Hospital, Memphis, Tennessee, so that children of all creeds and colors might be cared for absolutely free. Remember what the Master said, whatever you do unto these, the least of my children. Danny, uh, I take it that your faith in St. Jude must have given you great strength somewhere along the line, hasn't it? Yes, it, it certainly did give me great strength. I was destitute. I was broke, penniless and without any kind of work. And I went into a church, and I prayed for help, and I got it. And now I'm trying to say thank you by building a hospital where in the heart of each child that is cured, there will be a shrine in the heart of the child rather than a material, spiritual edifice. I hope to get it built before I die. Well, I hope you do too, Danny. Thank you. Tell me, uh, wh where did the Danny Thomas come from? Those are the names of my youngest and oldest brothers. My baby brother Danny, my oldest brother Tom. Danny, I wonder if uh, I could say good night to the family before we have to leave you? Yes, uh, but before we do that, I, I have a little surprise for you. At least I hope it's a surprise. Would you come in, uh, please? 
Come in, little children. Mom, carry to the piano. Tony over there. I'll stand behind you, Muggsy. Uh, in keeping, in keeping with the season. Lisa. Danny, thank you very much. What ornaments you have around your house in addition to those on the tree? Thank you. And it's a great privilege to have visited with you tonight. Uh, Danny, um, what was the best piece of advice you received while you were coming up in show business? Well, that's a pretty tough question to answer. I, I've received many bits of advice in my lifetime, and I guess I've used most of them. But to answer your question, I would say a poem once read to me, the title of it is, Be the Best of Whatever You Are. And there is a, a stanza in particular. And it reads, If you can't be a highway, then just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. Because it isn't by size that we win or we fail. So be the best of whatever you are. Danny, I have a half dozen other questions I wanted to ask you, but uh, I would like to go back again and ask you to give me that phrase on St. Jude's Hospital. It was a shrine in the heart of a child. Was that right? That's right. I felt that instead of building a spiritual edifice where people may come to pray for help, I would build a more material one and let the spiritual aspect of it grow in the heart of each child that is cured. Thank you, Danny Thomas, very much. And thank you, all the other Thomases, for letting us come and visit you. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good night. Good night. We'll be back in a moment. Years ago, you showed her your love like this. Now, implanted in her heart forever with this 21 jewel Lady Elgin heart-to-heart -heart diamond watch in 14 karat gold with blazing diamonds. Inside is Elgin's guaranteed, unbreakable Durapower mainspring, the heart that never breaks. Lady Elgin heart-to-heart -heart diamond watches with two to 16 diamonds from $100. Exclusively yours from Elgin. The beautiful way to say Merry Christmas. And now back to Edward R. Murrow. Next week, the author of the bestseller, A Man Called Peter, Mrs. Catherine Marshall, and the Arthur Murray. They dance. There are some of the people who made tonight's program possible. And now, from person to person, good night and good luck. Hello, I'm Bob Dixon. Well, I know that you're all anticipating the great weekend ahead just like the thousands of Amico people who are getting ready for Christmas, too. And so from all of them to you, wherever you are, whoever you are, customer or competitor, may the bells peal out a very Merry Christmas. That's Amico's wish for you. And all of us here in the studio echo it. Merry Christmas. Good night. <laughs>